All right, so we talked about um, the beginning of this whole, whole idea of historical enumeration systems. We talk about mathematical systems being made up of elements and operations for combining them and then ways of comparing them. We talked about our number system, which is the Hindu Arabic number system. And um, we have 10 numerals, 0 through 9. We have lots of operations um, and lots of actually ways of comparing our numbers. And then we looked at two different number systems. Um, the one we talked about mostly was Egyptian. Um, Egyptian has some interesting symbols. Um, and so writing them can be kind of cumbersome if you have to write a whole bunch of them, like nine of them or something like that. Um, but the numeration itself, um, changing them back and forth between our number and their number is relatively easy. Um, so we did some examples where we changed them from their system into ours and likewise from our number into theirs. Not only that, but we got a little bit further and we actually added Egyptian numerals. Do you remember doing this where we had to borrow and carry very much like ours? And then subtracting for the same thing and we did the borrowing fact over there. We talked about the fact that when you do this homework, um, these kinds of questions are going to be in there and they're going to ask you to convert your answer, not the problem. So you should be doing the problem as though you were an Egyptian, walk like an Egyptian kind of stuff, right? Um, and then you can change your answer at the very end. And then the last thing we did last time before we left is that we talked about the Roman numeration system and the symbols. And so we got to this slide where we wrote all their symbols down. Does that look pretty good? In a nutshell, what we've done so far, right? Now, the thing that we didn't do is we didn't talk about their numeration system very much yet. We talked about their symbols, but they have some interesting things that we don't do in our number system. Oh, I did it on the other slide. Okay, let's do it over here. So they actually um, have some of what the Egyptians were doing. They do repetition for symbols, or repetition of symbols. So in other words, if they want the number three, they put three of the eyes together, right? They repeat the symbol for three. Um, so they have some repetition of symbols, but they don't do all of their symbols that way. For instance, if I want the number eight, I don't do eight ones or eight slash marked eyes next to each other, right? They have something else that they do. So they actually have a subtractive feature. And do you remember any of their numbers where they do something that's sort of weird? Yeah. They do something with a number before it, right? So when somebody said a 9, what do they do for 9? They do an I and then an X. And then they do it also for another number. 4, they put an I and then a V, right? Those are the two numbers that are small numbers that you've dealt with before where they sort of change things up a little bit. So um, in particular... Let me show you, um, the subtraction feature is unique. It's available, actually, it's in unique situations. So let me show you the three unique situations or this kind of an idea. They do the number one or I before, and this is the one you guys already mentioned, before an X or a V, right? And um, that corresponds, so IV corresponds to the number four, and IX corresponds to the number nine, okay? That's the only time they'll use an I before a number. So they're not gonna do IM or IC or ID. None of that's gonna happen. It's always gonna be either IV or IX. It's the only time you're going to see the I written in front of another symbol. They do, however, write other symbols in front of numbers that you may not be aware of. They would write an X before C, well, let's say L or C, just so I'm going in the same number order. L or C. So if they write XL, that does not mean extra large. But go back. X is what number? 10. What is L? L. 50. So what do you think happens when we put an X in front of an L? We get 40. We do. And what do you think happens, well, let's do XC. What is C? C is 100. So what happens, do you think, when we put an X in front of a C? That's 90. So that's interesting, right? Because we've got 4, and we've got 9, and we've got 40, and we've got 90. And there's one more. They will put a C before... 
D or M? So let's do CD. What? That's not a compact disc. Um, D, what number is that? 100. So if I, was it 100? Did I say it right? 500. D is 500, right? Okay, yeah, I said it wrong, sorry. D is 500. So if I put a 100 before 500, that would be the number 400. And then if I put it in front of an M, what's an M? That's 1,000. So if I put a 100 in front of 1,000, I would get 900. So in every single instance here, you got something with a 4 or a 9 in it, didn't you? So we're never going to use this subtractive feature for 8 or 3 or 6. Make sense? It's only going to be present when we have 4s and 9s in different place values. Are you okay over there, Adam? Uh, you put X in it says CM. Oh, I did. Thank you. Let me fix that. I was looking at my line. Thank you, thank you. Yes, let's fix it. CM is correct. Everybody make sure you get that fixed because I did write that wrong. Sorry about that. There's one more interesting feature that you probably are not aware of, and we don't see it used all that much, but it is what they would do in their number system. They have a multiplication feature. <coughs> so you should sort of be looking at their numbers and saying, I'm looking back over here for a sec. Um, what happens if the number is more than a thousand? Okay. Right. What well, What would they do? I mean, do they have another symbol, or, or do they do something different? And they do something different. They don't have any more symbols. They do something with multiplication. So they do one of two things. If they put a bar, like a single, kind of like a you know a hat, if you will, like a straight straight line bar, a bar over a numeral. means multiply by 100. I didn't say 100. I said 100. I meant 1,000. Let me get the number right. 1,000. That's how we get it bigger than 1,000. And if you want something that's even larger than that, they would do a double bar. Okay? So a double bar... Again, it's over a numeral, but it means multiply by a million. That's a million there at the end. And I think that if we look at the next slide, we'll see one of them so you can see what that looks like. All right, so you see on number eight, or you see the bar and the double bar. So this double bar right here is going to be multiplied by a million, and this single bar means multiply these digits by a thousand. So we'll come into play with this in a minute, but let's do the one that's seven first, because it doesn't have any multiplication features. All right, so what we're going to first identify is which of the numbers might in fact have that form where there's subtraction involved. So do you see any of these that look like those different, what basically, six cases where we had IV, IX, XL, XC, CD, or CM. Do we have any of those? XC. We do. XC here. That's the only one though, right? Okay. So otherwise, what we're actually having is we actually have numbers that decrease in value. So the M value is a thousand. What about D? That's 500. If I looked at the X and the C separately, X would be 10 and C would be 100. And if you, if you write them down because you didn't sort of look at the beginning like we did and circle it, that should be a red flag. If you've got a smaller number in front of a bigger one, there's a subtraction feature going on there, right? 10, 100, so this is the number 90, right? Yeah. And then I've got the... V, what is V? Five. Five. And then at the end, these two here together are two. two. So in essence, what I have is I have all of these values multiplied together. So I have 1,000. I have 500. 
I have 90, I have a 5, and I have a 2. And they are, in fact, the different place values except for the 5, 2 at the end. So what is this value here? 1,597. Okay, make sense? Okay, so eight's a little weird because I have the bars and I haven't done one with bars yet with you guys. So um, let's identify first what the symbols are. So what is the X? That's 10, good. I've got a C and a D and if C comes before D, what's C? 100 and D is? 500, so this is one of those special cases, right? The smaller numbers in front of the bigger one. So 100 in front of 500 makes a 400. So this value right here together is 400. The next symbol is L, and what is L? That's 50, followed by an X, which is 10, uh-huh. And then I have I and then V, which is 4. That's the other one of the special cases, right? So this right here is one of my special cases. CD was as well. Um, and then I've got the values 4. Now, I don't just write down 10, 450, and 10 and 4, because I've got multiplication going on here, right? So I actually have 10 here times a million, because it has two bars on the top of it. Plus, I have 400 times 1,000, because it had one bar on top of it. Everything else didn't have any bars on it, so they just get added. So I've got 50 plus 10 plus 4. Is everybody with me on this one? So you don't just do the C when the bar's over the C? Well, the bar wasn't just over C, at least not, and it wasn't oh, in mine. It was okay. the C and the D combined. Sorry. If the bar had just been over C, you would. You would just do C times 1,000, and then D would be all by himself because he was not underneath the bar with it. Yeah. Um, all right, so I've got 10 million, right? And then what? 400,000. And then what? Uh, 64. 64, so zero, six, four. Please show me your work as you do these so that if you make a mistake in one little spot, you don't get it all off. You don't lose everything for it, okay? It's easy to make a mistake. Okay, we're going to go the other direction now. So we're going to take one of our numbers and we're going to write it in Roman numerals. Now, we didn't talk about this last time, but Roman numerals are still used today. We mentioned briefly one place that you know of them being used, namely like outline forms. What are some other places where you see Roman numerals used? Yeah, Super Bowl logo, so like the Super Bowl that you're on, Super Bowl number. Along that line as well, you see it used for the Olympics. Did you guys notice it this summer? They use it there too. Where else do you see it used? Clocks. And in fact, um, when I first came to campus here, I um, had a, sp a talk with Dr. Whitlock, and he told me you should look at the, t at the clock tower. There's something wrong with it. And so I'm going to leave that to you to look at the clock tower and tell me what is wrong with it when you come back to class next time. And I completely had forgotten about this conversation I'd had with him. I actually looked at it the other day, and I figured it out, what's wrong with it. And you guys can too. So you look at that clock tower, and you tell me what is wrong with that clock tower. And it is related. Shh, don't spoil the fun, Michael. It's related to Roman numerals. Okay? All right. All right, so let's take a look at these particular numbers and change them in, into their number form. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so I've got the number 2,861. How in the world do I get each digit? Let's start with the 2. How do I get the number 2,000? Not with, there won't be a bar, because we can do it with, we can do it with two M's. Two M's would work, so yes. That's actually a really good question, though. When would I use a bar? Well, I'm going to use a bar anytime I have more than the ability that my M's would give me, which means... If you had 4,000, you would use a bar. Okay, no, that's not true, because we can get 4,000 as well. Which, when do we actually get to them? 
I guess it would be more than 10,000 because we can use our M's before then. So you'd have to get up to 10,000 before you'd use a bar. Um, how do you get eight? How do you get 800, I should say? I'm sorry, what was it? Which was? CCM. Would you? Okay. D, C, C, C. So I would love it if it were CCM, but that is not what they would do, right? They only did that subtractive feature when it was numbers like 9 or 4, and this one's 8. So they're going to do an addition feature to it, right? So they're going to take 500, and they're going to add three 100s to it. So this is 500 for D, and then 100 three times for C. Make sense? How about 6? How do you get the 60? LX, exactly. L is 50 and X is 10, so 60 is 50 plus 10. In that order, you switch the order around and you've got 40, right? All right. And then we get the number 1 by doing a 1. Okay. So, okay, so I didn't get that recorded, so I'm going to record that now to correct myself, okay? So, correction, once we get to 4,000, we need to use bars because we can't repeat the digit, the symbol, four times. In their number system, they would repeat a symbol at most three times, okay? All right, this one is 7 million, though, uh, which is definitely more symbols than they have. Um, so, but it's in the millions place, yeah? So, this right here, and this right here, and this right here, these are actually three different numbers that we're going to consider sort of separately. So how do I get the number 7? V-I-I. -I. That's 7, right? How do I get it to be 7 million instead of just 7? Double, bar. Double bars. Okay. The next number is the number 300. How do I get a 300? Three C's, one more. three C's, right, is the 300. And then I need one bar to make it 300,000. Now I've got 999. How do you get 900 CM? How do you get 90 XC? And how do you get 9 IX? So we take it and we piece it together, right? We do one chunk at a time. And the parentheses are great helps for being able to decipher which piece we do. Yes, Nicole? Um, so since it has the bar over it, that doesn't count towards the three letters in a row? Correct. It's kind of like what we do when we do parentheses. So it's a kind of, a, kind of like a grouping symbol. Mm -hmm. It won't apply towards the three C's after it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this one? I think we have one more number system in our section 4.1. Chinese. Has anybody studied Chinese numbers before? I had one student one semester who had, and he brought a great deal of information that I had not heard before to the discussion. Um, so there's some interesting things about the Chinese numbers. First of all, they're kind of like ours. They have symbols for the numbers from 0 through 10. They don't have a symbol for 0 itself. They do have a symbol for 0 as well. But then they've also got a symbol for 10, which we don't exactly have. We use the numbers we already have. And they've got another couple of additional symbols too. So let's talk about the values they have first. So they have values for, um, we'll do 0 first. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I think I can do six down here. And then we'll do again over here. I'll carry it over. They have seven, eight, nine. They have a number for 10, and they have a number for 100. And then one more for 1,000. OK. Now, the most <coughs> difficult symbol to write is 0. Isn't that excellent? So you love zeros in our number system because they mean you don't have anything. Well, I 
can't even write this one without studying it because it's uh, so strange. So let me get it written proper properly. You've got a loop like this. You get a straight line down. It crosses three times across. At the bottom, it looks like this. Something like that. Your books is even better because I don't do this symbol very well. So the symbol for the number zero is uh, messy, and I run out of space for either numbers. I should have put them in space a little bit better. Okay, let's do the symbol for the number one. I like that one. It looks like this. Can you do that one? You're going to like two just as well. You've got a small one on top of a longer one. That's the number two. The number three looks like um, you're almost doing, you know, grade school uh, papers. So you have sort of that dashed line look in the middle of it. The highway with the line in the middle. The number four, I look at it and I think it looks like a valance, curtains. The number five looks an awful lot like an H with a couple of extra lines attached. Six looks like a sideways T. Seven, I'm sorry, that was seven. I wrote the wrong one down. My apologies, let's write that over here on seven. Six looks like, I think it looks like a stick figure. My pictures are not the best. If you want a better description, your book will do that for you. Um, eight looks like a lambda, which is a Greek letter. You may or may not have seen before. I don't know. Um, nine looks like a cursive N. Ten looks like a plus sign. Eleven looks like a plus sign with an extra small hat on the top of it. Okay? So, oh, I said eleven. I'm sorry, one hundred. My, my, my mistake, yes, 100. Um, so one of the things that students will often do for me on the number 100 is they'll make the symbol on top the longer one and the symbol in the middle the shorter one, kind of like a capital T and F combined or something like that. The symbol on top is shorter. The little bar on top is shorter than the plus part in the middle, okay? And the number 1,000 looks like, um, I don't know, dynamite, at least my image of dynamite from, you know, Wiley Coyote and whatnot look something like this. But here's the cooler thing about what their system does. Their system uses positional numeration. I don't think I have this spot here. Yeah. All right. So they use positional numeration, which is what we do. Yeah. Oh, I have 100, 1,000 backwards? I don't know. I just, in the book, I don't know which is correct. Yeah, if it's wrong, if, if it's in the book, then I've gone backwards. That's awesome. Good to know. Thank you for fixing that. Whoops. There we go. So I have dynamite, and then I have a plus sign with a hat. All right, so positional numeration. And the more interesting thing, perhaps, is that it's written vertically. And that's what's on my next slide. All right. So, oh, yeah, I, my notes, they're right in my notes. I just wrote them on my screen wrong. Okay, that's good. All right, so um, you see them written in a top-down kind of a form, okay, right? We don't see them written left to right across the page like we write our numbers. It's top-down. And um, what we need to do when we're identifying this top-down, this, this is an interesting thing that they do, is that they use that number for 10 and that number for 100 and the number for 1,000 to indicate the place value you're in. All right, so we do this in our system. We just don't write it down, right? So when we write down the number 357, we mean we've got 3 times 100. We don't really mean we have 3. We have 300, right? 
And we mean 50, we, we mean 5 times 10, I and mean, that's what 50 means, and then we've got the 7. Well, that's what they're doing as well. You're just seeing them right in the 100 and the 10. So as you take a look at the first situation right here, these two numbers right here, I've got a number on top, and then I've got that symbol right there that was the number for what? I had it written right. It was 100, right? So what is the symbol that, that looks like the first one? What number does that make? Nine. That's 9. Oops. And then the symbol underneath it means I've got 9 times 100. And then I can do the same thing below that, right? I've got a symbol, and then I've got a symbol that looks like one of those powers of 10. So the symbol is, that's a 3. I need to use yellow. This red is not working for you guys. Let's try that. I've got a symbol for 3, and then what is the plus sign underneath its symbol for? Yeah. That's 3 times 10. They're not doing it with just any symbols. It's always the 10 and the 100 and the 1,000 that they do this with, okay? And then you notice at, end, at the end, we just have one more symbol all by himself down at the bottom, and that is the number what? That's 5. So this value right here is actually the number 935. Because I have 900s, I have 310s, and I have 51s. Just like I meant when I said 53. Sorry, 357 up here, right? Same thing. They just write in that value. So let's do that over here on the next one. You notice the first symbol is what number? That is a 4. And the symbol underneath it tells you the place value you're in. And what place value are you in? That's 1,000. So this is 4 times 1,000. And then we have another symbol. What is that second symbol underneath my yellow line? That's a 2, and then the value underneath it is the place value you're in, which is the hundreds place. So I've got 4 times 1,000 and 2 times 100 means I've got what number? 4,200. Is that okay? All right. We need to go the other direction. We need to be able to take our numbers and write it in their symbols. Okay? So how do I got the number 202? Two, and if it helps you to see it written, we can actually write that in what this is called expanded form, what I have on the board. And we'll talk more about that in section, I think it's 4-3. But this is really 2 times 100 plus 0 times 10, actually, right? And then we've got the 2 by itself. So how do I write the number 2? Short bar, long bar, right? So it looks like this. That's the number 2. And they kind of are at a slant a little bit. <coughs> but I need to say 2 times 100, so I need to write the value for the 100 underneath it. And if I had not done it incorrectly before, it would have looked like the dynamite bar. That's 200. Now, you might have noticed, nobody asked, but I'll bring it back up over here. On 12, um, I didn't have any zeros representing the zeros at the end, did I? The only time that they use zeros is when the zero is smashed between the numbers. So they're using it sort of as a placeholder between things, which is exactly how I have it used on number 13. I've got 202, but there's a zero in the middle missing. Are you with me? So we're going to put a zero placeholder in here. Looks so something like that. It's probably the fastest I've ever drawn one right there. That's excellent. All right, so that's my zero. Um, they don't do the zero times 10. They just leave it in there as a zero. Um, if you put in zero times 10, I'm not going to freak out on you or anything like that. So if you want to put a plus sign right there, I'm okay with that just to remind yourself that that's zero times 10. Uh, but then I have a number 2 at the bottom, and we already talked about what the number 2 looks like. It, it looks like this, right? So I'm going to take my plus sign out. But So that's the number 202. Now, I didn't say it, but hopefully you saw me doing it. The higher values on top and the lower values on the bottom, right? Okay. We're going to see another number system that does that in 4.2. The higher values on top, lower value on bottom. All right, we've got 7,612. Same thing. So I have 7 times 1,000. 
I have 6 times 100. I have 1 times 10, and I do need to remember that it is 1 times 10, not just 10. And then I have plus 2. All right, so what does the 7 look like? Slanty. That's the slanty T one. And I need to do 7 times a, um, a thousand, and a thousand is a short bar with the long bar in the middle, something like that. 600. How do I get a 6? What does it look like? Kind of like a stick person. His other arm's coming. There it is. All right, so there's our 6, and then I need to do that times 100. And 100 look like my dynamite box. Now, the 1 times 10, I really do need a 1 in there. And the 1 is the symbol that's this, the line across, right? Just one single line across. So this is 1. They would really write that. And then if you want to do the times 10, because we need that portion of it too, we have the plus sign. Okay, I know that the plus sign by itself means 10, but they use it positionally. Okay? So you can't just put it in there by itself. It always has to be times something, even if it's times 1. And then we've got the number 2 at the end, which looks like that. I'm not very good at drawing pictures. And even these symbols are somewhat picturesque, right? Yeah. 